Welcome to Arcade Sunday. In today's video, I'm going to do a recap of uh, the Ruby Arcade installation procedure. I just set up the front end, the back end, hard drive, partitioning, etc. It's a very straightforward video. So, if you've ever wanted to give Ruby Arcade a try, this is your opportunity to learn from me Arcade Sunday. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. It's Arcade Sunday. Okay, so on boot, if your machine um, looks like this, you've done the right thing. Um, you want to push down once on the keyboard to choose well, the correct video source. In my case, it's VGA1 and press enter. Um, the installation will begin from here on. And uh, if you've done the right thing, it should go into the correct resolution like so and uh, continue with installation and get into the installation menu. So I'm going to wait for that to happen and then we'll go from there. Right, so here's the um, welcome to Groovy Arcade Linux setup. Uh, very straightforward. Um, I'm going to try and position this camera a little bit better. But unfortunately, it is vertical, so it's hard to read, of course, but uh, this is the best I can do for now. So I'm going to say OK. Um, I'm going to go first to um, the hard drive installation partition tools. Um, this is just important to make sure that your drive is ready for the installation. So partition manager, caution, um, what amount to say yes. Okay, there's the drive. It's a 500 gig uh, old drive. I'm going to say OK to that. You'll see there's existing partitions here. So what I want to do, um, you can either select delete at the bottom here, or you can just use button D on the keyboard to delete. So I'm going to go to delete that one, D, delete that one, D, delete that one. Now you've got a basically a full drive free space. Um, now you want to use arrow keys to go to uh, to the right option. Um, you're going to press enter. It says, do you want to partition? You must type in e Y, E, S, yes. You can't just press Y or N. You must type in yes, press OK. And then it'll actually say the partition table has been altered. Um, then you want to go to quit and you're basically ready now to do the installation. I'm going to go to cancel here because I've already done the partitioning. Um, again, I'm going to go back here and back to the main screen. Now, it sounds like I've done things in reverse order, but this is kind of the way I've always done it and it seems to work. Okay, now you want to go to um, the second option now. Uh, setup video audio network. Press enter. Okay, video setup. Press enter again. Monitor type. Um, you can select one of these monitor types if you own one of these name brand monitors. If you're lucky enough to have one of these, choose one of these that they match um, perfectly for the for that type of monitor. For me, I'm just going to choose a generic 15.7 kilohertz. Um, you say yes. Um, it writes a config at the moment. This takes a little while, maybe 30 seconds or so. We'll just wait for that to finish. Okay, so you drop back at the video setup menu. I'm going to go to monitor orientation. Now, this uh, may not be important for you. Um, you may probably have a horizontal monitor, but for me, this particular machine is vertical. So, my monitor orientation vertical. Um, the default is horizontal, but vertical in this case, I'm going to use the rotating slash both option, I believe, is for an automated system. Um, so, I've never used that. I don't know what it does. So, I choose vertical. Uh, the aspect ratio, again, 4 to 3 is the default. Um, you hopefully have a monitor that is 4 to 3 because that's the perfect resolution for arcade cams. Um, the rest of the options I've never had to use. I'm not really sure what they do. Um, they may do, like it says, fixed video. There's some custom stuff you can do. I'll just leave uh, this alone and just go to return to main. Um, the next important thing is um, on certain versions of the Groovy Arcade installer, the audio setup. Um, has very low volume, so I'll go into audio, also mixer, just to make sure these are the levels of the audio. Um, so you can use the left and right arrows to choose which one, so it's like master, headphone, front. Um, that's really all the three. Um, you can use up and down to adjust the volume on either one of these sliders. I just put it onto max, because you can always later on then adjust the volume via your normal volume control on your speakers or however you adjust the volume. So I'm going to press F10 to get out of here. Um, the next important setting for me is audio latency. Um, I delete the default of two and put one there. I say OK and um, that is my audio setup. Network, uh, this machine is not part of a network. I don't need to do any of the joystick setup. However, front end, this is another important one. 
um, I will choose attract mode as the front end. So it will switch to front end. So this will start up the attract mode front end when the emulator starts up, which is exactly what you want. Return to main. Okay, I don't um, want to do any of this right now, um, but I am, however, going to start the installation now. So it's, the setup is done. So now you want to go back to the hard drive installation um, and we're ready. So hard drive installation. And here we go, install to hard drive, yes. Um, networking, no. Uh, system settings, no, I've already done this, so I say no. Um, do I have a list of ROMs um, at this point? No, so I'm gonna say no. And do you want to order partition to empty a drive? And you wanna say yes. That's the same drive we partitioned earlier. I'm gonna say okay. Really, partition is warning you, yes. All or everything will be erased, you say yes. Okay, now the formatting and partitioning will start to happen now, along with the installation. This probably takes um, around 10 minutes, well, for me anyway, on this older computer. Your uh, mileage may vary. Uh, let's uh, come back when this is done. All right, so the installation is complete. Um, do you want to remove, uh, to reboot, to remove CD-ROM? Uh, you say yes um, and get ready to remove the bootable media. Uh, really reboots, giving you a second warning. And then uh, just press enter to reboot. And at the same time, uh, remove the memory uh, card or memory stick or whatever installation media you're booting from to ensure it doesn't boot back up into the again. Okay. And let's see it reboot. Resolution should change shortly. And is it booting up for the first time? Okay, it's going to start off with this um, layout. Um, I'll immediately go and press tab, go to displays, go to MAME, um, and then go to the layout. I'm going to change attract mode at default to um, use up and down to choose, well in this case, uh, verticals. There are other options, but verticals is nice for vertically orientated monitors. The other thing I want to do immediately is turn that sound off, ambient sound. So go to sound, up, 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 look for ambient volume, press enter, I'll press zero for zero volume, or press up for zero, enter, back and back. And we are now in verticals with no background uh, helper audio, which is in my mind, my mind much better. Um, okay, these are the default games that come with the installation. So now we're gonna basically go into the back end and um, get um, our own set of ROMs onto this machine. So to do that, we're gonna um, press escape, exit attract mode, you say yes. It's gonna drop you at the setup menu again. Um, at this point, I'm <clears throat> at this point, I'm going to go to um, File Manager, and then um, press Enter, and it gives you the familiar File Manager, or well, not familiar if you're not familiar with it, but uh, this is familiar to me. Um, I'm put the memory stick back in, and hopefully, it will mount. All right, so I put the memory stick in. Let's see if we can find it. Back, back, back. Media, and there it is, mounted there. Very happy. Um, I do have um, another theme that we can look at uh, at this stage. Okay, in this case I've got a, a ROM here. I'll put the rest on at a later stage, but this is just an example of how to get it running. Um, I'm going to use tab to go to the other side of the window. Um, the default area is ROMs, MAME, ROMs. And here you'll see the ROMs that were installed by default are typically um, just for the sake of uh, this demonstration, I'm going to remove all the old ROMs. So select all using insert button, or um, you can press the asterisk key to select all. And then I'm going to press F8 uh, to delete. Um, the options are listed below here, what the function keys do, just you can't really see it very well on the screen. So F8 deletes all. Oh, there's one left over, delete that as well. And then I'm gonna press tab again to go to this side of the window. So now you wanna copy this file over to there. It's like a copy and paste or drag and drop, but just using keyboard, the button's F5 to do that. Now that file is on. 
that side, in other words, on the installation side. I'm going to go uh, press F10 to escape um, back to the main menu. Then I'm going to say start the front end. At this point, you'll be back at this front end and you will notice that, of course, um, the ROMs that are still listed here are incorrect. Uh, because this reads from a MAME XML file which lists all the game names. So because we've deleted these and added the new ROM or ROMs, you want to go back to tab, you want to go to emulators, then MAME, and then you want to say generate collection ROM list. So overwrite exis existing MAME list. So that MAME uh, XML will be overwritten um, by whatever ROMs you have, it'll try and match the names uh, to the main XML and give you a new list. You go back, you see a strange result here. So there's only one ROM, it's only going to show one. So I'm going to try and start this game up and to see that it works. That's great news. So um, typically, this age, you probably also want to set your uh, default controls. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, again, it's a matter of Pressing tab, input general. You can do input this machine if you want to, if you've got specific controls for particular machines. Um, so in or, or games in that way. So I'm gonna go input general and the there's one controls. Okay, up, down, left, right already mapped correctly to my control because it's is already like it. Um, the right stick up, right stick down, etc. Um, I usually delete all of these. So if you use up and down, down, just press the delete key on your keyboard and delete all of these sort of in like eight way controls, there's no need for those. Um, again, the defaults is control, um, my button one, so I'm gonna press enter and press button one on my control panel, which is return or enter. Button two uh, is Q and button three on my machine is V. So there's no button four or five or six. Or seven. I typically just delete anything that is not in use by any game, otherwise just to avoid any particular issues down the line. Okay, start is one, one is already mapped to one on my on my cabinet, and five is already mapped to that on my control. Uh, these my own controls, again, these are unused. I would just typically delete any unused buttons going forward, just to avoid any kind of conflicts with any particular default settings or whatever the case may be. Uh, so yeah, I'll just go ahead and delete, 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 down, delete, down, delete, etc, 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 etc. There's Hannah Funda, the same thing. Um, just remove uh, unnecessary controls. Okay, once that's done for player one, um, if you have player two, three, four, etc., do the same process. Um, user interface, I also like to just make sure that this is um, gonna work. I usually just use, yeah, the default is tab that will give you the on-screen display. Um, again, I don't like to have pause enabled, so I usually delete that. Um, I Sometimes I ever set it to P only in case, but usually I leave pause out because most of the time uh, pause is not available on arcade machines. So yeah, I don't really like that. Um, as I leave default and um, the, the up and down, left, right, again, depending on your machine, um, set those accordingly. Um, the other important thing here is the cancel. Um, I like to, because I use it, my cabinet has got uh, two buttons on the front so it can be uh, is uh, so I like to have it cancel as in escape and cancel as in one and two at the same time to do this you need to actually literally push both buttons together it will map them together as an escape which is perfect so that's escape or one and two together will, will do that the rest uh, typically there's nothing really much else that needs to be done here um, return to previous menu return uh, return to machine. Okay, so then the game should be basically ready to play at this point. Um, let's just put a coin in just to make sure everything is working as planned. Okay, there's a coin in through. I'm going to press 1 on my cabinet to actually start it up. And then the game starts. Uh, note that I've never played this game before. It's actually something coming up soon on Arcade Sunday. I just thought I would uh, get uh, Groovy Arcade running with this game to see how it goes. So, I don't know what the premise of the game is, but anyway, you push that wall over and you have to grab all the keys, basically. It's a very interesting uh, take on a little sort of, I don't know, what do you call this type of game? Um, like a maze game? Uh, is it like 
Pac-Man, is it like Bomberman? I don't know, but uh, it looks like a fun time. But uh, yeah, um, I'll get into this game at a later stage. I'm going to exit now, press 1 and 2 per um, my earlier settings, so I could have pressed escape. Um, I'm going to just do one more clean up here for the uh, front end, which is a useful trick that I do every time. Um, again, tab to show the, the menu system here. Um, you want to go to controls. Now, this is controls for this emulator, the front end, basically. So again, the, the defaults are okay. Um, I've done it right. What I want to change here is the previous display, next display. Now this is um, for other emulators. So if you press left to right, it goes to like NES or MSX or different other emulators that aren't actually on here. So I'd like to disable that in my case. So I'm going to choose one of the next display inputs. I'm going to um, remove the right button just so that it doesn't um, so the right control so the right on the control doesn't actually do anything um, and then I'm going to say back and um, yeah the same for left just to, to make it something else and remove the default so to test this I'm just going to go back and back and back again and now left and right don't do anything which is correct and then i'm going to just start the game up again just to make sure yeah so game is loading um cool so escape back to main menu okay so now it's at this point um, you want to basically put the rest of your roms on generate your main xml file um, and if you've got any other settings high scores etc from your last installations then that's a time also to dump this in, into this installation. This is just the basic overview of how to do this installation. I know it was on a vertical screen, so it might have been a bit confusing. Nonetheless, um, I hope this helps you, and I hope that you give our Groovy Arcade a go. It's, I've been using it for many, many years. It's a great solution uh, for exactly what I, what I do here. Just um, basically uh, a couple of arcade machines uh, in my little arcade. Uh, so yeah. Uh, we'll get this thing up and running and hopefully push back into its right place and uh, play some games. So just like that, uh, Arcade Sunday out. Uh, if you've learned something and uh, let me know if you've got uh, Groovy Arcade running on your arcade. Cheers for now. Welcome to Arcade Sunday. Welcome to Arcade Sunday.